The day spring from on high hath visited us to give light unto them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Dayspring is an effort to be in touch with good people who love God and who believe that the Bible is His Word. Dayspring is brought to you by your neighbors from churches of Christ in this area. And now, visit with us as we draw near to God. It is a real pleasure to be with you today. We're delighted that you've chosen to spend time with us. We shall treat you as our guests. We invite you to sit with us for a while and open your Bible with us and let's look at it and see what it says. Today I invite you to turn to the book of First Peter in your New Testament, where I shall read from chapter 2. There is a verse there that shall guide our thoughts today. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. In that verse, Peter wrote, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. There's the verse. Pay special attention to these words. Speaking of Christ, Peter wrote, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. There is a translation of the New Testament. In fact, the American Standard Version of our New Testament in a note renders that phrase like this. He carried up our sins in his own body to the tree. He bare our sins. He carried up our sins. As he went to the cross, Jesus carried our sins with him. A, f a good translation of the New Testament makes that passage read, He himself brought our sins in his body to the cross. What's involved in that simple statement is this. Suffering punishment for the sins of someone else. That's what Jesus did when he bore our sins to the cross. He was innocent, sinless, and yet he bore the punishment for our sins. That's what we sometimes refer to as vicarious suffering. We must understand, we must grasp that concept. It means everything to us for us to realize that Christ bore our sins, that he carried the weight of them. The punishment of our sins were placed upon him. I invite you to turn back in your Bible to the book of Numbers in the Law of Moses. In Numbers chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, a time when the spies were sent out, and as the result of that, the whole nation of Israel rebelled against God and against Moses. Here's what's said. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? 
And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said, one to another, let us make a captain and let us return unto Egypt. There's wholesale rebellion. Rebellion not only against Moses and Aaron, but rebellion against God as well. Verse 11 of that same 14th chapter of Numbers. The record says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I showed among them. How long is this rebellion going to last? Well, now at verse 26 in this same chapter, this very unusual reading, the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do unto you. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that, num that are numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. Now listen carefully to verse 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. You're going to do the sinning. You've done the sinning. You've been rebellious against me. And your children are going to pay the penalty for it. They're going to bear your whoredoms. Bear the brunt of your uh, infidelity is what the New King James Version says. You've done the sinning, but somebody else is going to bear the penalty for it. You're going to die. The penalty will not fall on you, but your children are going to wander in this wilderness for 40 years. That'll be the punishment. But they're going to suffer for what you did. They'll bear the brunt of it, suffering for your unfaithfulness, is what the English Standard Version says. They're going to suffer for your unfaithfulness. Now that's what's called vicarious suffering, suffering punishment for the sins of somebody else. That's what fell upon the children of these Israelites. All of them who left Egypt over 20 years old would not make it to the promised land. They'd die in the wilderness. But their children, under the age of 20, were going to suffer that full 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Suffering not for their own sins, but suffering for the sins of their parents. Suffering for somebody else. Leviticus chapter 25. In Leviticus chapter 22, verse 9, the Bible says, They shall therefore keep my ordinances, lest they bear sin for it. Bear sin for not keeping his ordinances? What does that mean? That means they're going to be punished for it. They're going to bear the sins they've committed. Well, it would be a good thing, would it not, 
if somebody else could bear their sins for them. That gives us a taste of what it means when the Bible says Christ bear our sins in his own body on the cross. Now I'm turning to the book of Leviticus. In Leviticus chapter 16, there is another account which gives us a good, strong understanding of what it means to bear somebody else's guilt, to bear the suffering somebody else is due. Leviticus 16, verse 5. Uh, these are the words that Moses recorded. He shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Verse 15 says, Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle upon the mercy seat before the mer and before the mercy seat. That's what he did with the blood of the goat that he, that he killed. Now verse 20 in Leviticus 16. When he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hands of the fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Notice the significance of that phrase. The goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. The goat, the one called the scapegoat, would bear their iniquities. The goat shall bear on himself all their iniquities. That's what Jesus did when he bore our sins to the cross. The weight of our sins, their punishment, he took on himself. The Bible says in Hebrews 7 and verse 27, he offered up himself. He offered up himself did it for us. He made an offering of his own body on Calvary's tree. Now I'm turning to Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 18, this one great passage that we read quite often, in Ezekiel 18 and verse 20, the text says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The soul that sins 
will pay the penalty for it. We'll be punished for it. Not necessarily like it was in the wilderness when the children paid the penalty for the sins of their parents. Now, Ezekiel makes all that clear when he says now, not like it was back then, but now, the soul that sins, it shall die. One English version says the son shall not bear the punishment of the father. Neither shall the father bear the punishment of the son. Everybody's going to bear his own weight. Everybody's going to suffer for his sins. And the penalty is death. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31 at verse 29. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grape and the children's teeth are set on age. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. And every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on age. Children are not going to suffer for the sins of their parents anymore, like they did in the wilderness. And fathers will not suffer for the sins of their children. Everybody will suffer for himself. In Galatians, in the New Testament, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5, Paul wrote, for every man shall bear his own burden. I shall bear my burden. You shall bear your burden. Verse 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. When I sin, I shall bear the punishment for my sin. I shall not bear the punishment for your sin or for my father's sin, or for anybody else's sin, but for my sin. I sin, and I shall bear his punishment. The Bible says in Romans 6, the soul, the soul that sins, it shall die. <clears throat> the wages of sin is death. There's the wages of sin. And I shall pay my own wages, and you shall pay your own wages. With this question, this question comes perhaps to the back of our mind. Could someone else pay my penalty for me? Would it be possible that someone else could die in my place? Oh, what a great thought that is, if it were only possible. Which leads us back to the text with which we began our thoughts today. 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse 24, where Peter wrote these, these precious words. Peter said in that text, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. He bore our sins. He carried my sins for me. He bore my sins in his own body to the cross where he died and paid a penalty that I was due to pay. He died for us. He carried our sins in his body to the cross. He allowed the penalty of death to fall on him. There's the great thought. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Christ, uh, the Bible says, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So also was Christ once offered to bear the sin of many. And unto them that look for him, he shall appear a second time without sin unto salvation. He bore our sins to the cross. Sins that you and I were due to pay the penalty for. 
but he let that penalty be transferred to himself. And he carried that weight to the cross in our place. And when he comes again, when he appears a second time, he will appear without sin. That is to say, when he returns, it will not be to present himself again as a sin offering for us. He bore our sins the first time he came. He bore them in his own body to the cross. When he reappears, whenever that is, we do not know. The Bible does not say. When he reappears in the heavens, it will not be to offer himself as a sin offering again. He's already done that. If we have not taken advantage of it, he will not do it a second time for us. The second time he comes, it will be so that judgment can take place. And those who've lived faithfully for him here will be carried to live with him forever in the air. 1 Peter 3, verse 18 the text says, Christ also once suffered for sin. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Christ once suffered for sin. And notice carefully that phrase. The just, that's Christ. The innocent, he died, he suffered for the guilty. The, the just died for the unjust. Just like the young people in the nation of Israel in the wilderness paid the penalty for the sins of their parents, now Jesus is going to pay the penalty for our sins. He's going to transfer that penalty to himself and carry our sins up to the cross as he dies there as a penalty, the penalty of death transferred to himself. Oh, what a beautiful thought that is. Otherwise, you and I would bear our own sins. You and I would carry the weight of our own burden, which would be an impossible thing to do. The beautiful 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he, prophetically that refers to Christ. Although when Isaiah wrote those words, Jesus was still over 700 years in the future. His coming had not yet occurred. But prophetically, in a messianic way, Isaiah said of him, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He bore my griefs and carried my sorrows. He suffered vicariously for me. <clears throat> now, in that same prophetic chapter, verse 11, Isaiah 53, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide to him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He bare the sin of many. That's exactly what the New Testament says. Peter said that's what he did. Jesus bore the sins of many. That would include you. It would include me. A penalty you and I were supposed to pay. 
the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and verse 21, uh, that beautiful text uh, says, For even hereunto were we called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. For whom did he suffer? Not for himself. Remember, he was just. He was innocent. He was sinless during the time he spent on this earth. He, he did no sin. Peter said, neither was any guile found in his mouth. He was sinless, and yet he suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. First, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. Paul affirmed of Jesus, God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God made Jesus to be a sin offering for us. He knew no sin. He was innocent. He was guiltless. The innocent suffering for the guilty. That's vicarious suffering. And so the beautiful text before us, Peter wrote, who when he was, uh, who in his, his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, uh, that we might be dead to sins. He bare our sins in his own body on the cross. Thank you for letting me share these Bible thoughts with you. Until the next time, may the goodness of God be yours in full measure. You've been watching Dayspring. Dayspring is brought to you by your friends in local area churches of Christ. To request a free CD of today's lesson, you may contact us at Dayspring, Post Office Box 453, Tupelo, Mississippi, 38802-0453. There is no cost for this offer. You will not be asked for financial support. You can also phone your request toll-free at 1-866-842-4139. Or you can go to our website at dayspringtv.com. Thank you for visiting with us on Dayspring. May your joy be full. May the peace of God rule in your hearts, and may the light of Christ brighten heaven's way.